Yeah, I think that acalabrutinib is an exciting drug. That is a drug that is another BTK inhibitor, and it actually um, has um, actually some added specificity for BTK. It may not target other enzymes. One little fact is that when we call drugs a BTK inhibitor, there's no drug that really just targets BTK because there's always some degree of inhibition of other proteins. And there's a whole family of proteins that we call kinases that we can inhibit with any one particular drug. And sometimes this could prove to be an advantage. In other words, maybe it's beneficial to inhibit another kinase that might contribute to the disease. On the other hand, it also may contribute to off-target effects. And so this is actively being researched. And in the case of a acalabrutinib, uh, this is a different uh, inhibitor of BTK. And um, there had been, uh, at the recent ASCO, published the result of the phase three trial comparing uh, the introduction of acalabrutinib versus ibrutinib in the treatment of patients with CLL. And I think the outcomes showed that they had very favorable uh, and comparable response rates to ibrutinib. And they had uh, different types of uh, adverse events. In some cases, uh, some adverse events were of lower frequency and what have you. But I liken it to this, in that some patients will have a side effect with a given drug. And you don't know whether one drug is going to be uh, causing side effects and another drug may not. So having choices to be able to use another drug that may have a different profile of side effects or fewer side effects that really are problematic for that particular patient is a real advantage. So that is the acalabrutinib. Now we have xenobrutinib and terabrutinib, and uh, I think the list is going to grow even further. And now we have the new category that I mentioned to you, the ones that do not require covalent interaction with the BTK. I suspect that there's going to be a lot of activity in this because these drugs have been very successful. And having a drug that patients have to take for the rest of their lives is not a bad business model. So a lot of companies are getting into the business to develop drugs that you'd have to take like an antihypertensive or uh, insulin for diabetes. However, I look forward to the day when we can eradicate the disease, put it in the rear view mirror, that would save in cost, it would save in a lot of anxiety. And so therefore, we still have to go on to the quest of defining fixed duration therapies that are safe, effective, and able to prevent recurrent disease, at least in the great majority of patients.